Today we're going to take a look at my new Chinese knockoff benchtop power supply, pull it on out, see what it comes with, and run it through a few paces and see if it actually holds up considering it is a China based or if it's just a piece of junk that I've wasted money on. So let's open it up and see what we can find out. Looks like we got a power cable and a couple test leads. Okay, yep. Banana jack to alligator clip. Got a pair of those and the power cable. Packed in here pretty good. An instruction manual that's maybe six pages if I'm lucky. Okay, nope, my mistake. Four pages. Basically just gives you a layout of the machine. And that's about it. So, can't expect much there. Get the box out of the way. Let's take the unit out. Okay. Of course, it comes with a little piece of plastic to protect the screen. I take that off. I can't stand those things. Uh, on the front, you have your two test areas. Your on and off button. You have a coarse and fine for the voltage and current adjustments, and they do have upper and lower limits. Go figure, made in China. <laughs> On the back, um, okay, the uh, fuse is actually below, it's in a little door. It's a five amp fuse. And it looks like you got a little 60 millimeter cooling fan in there. So, let me put it up on the bench and get it all wired up and we'll move the camera over and give it a few tests and see what it can do. Okay, so I got the power connected into the back of the unit and I've got the little banana plug adapters plugged in to the front for my power outputs which go to uh, little alligator clips. And I got my multimeter off to the side here just so I can compare and see how good it is. So I'm just going to connect positive. A negative. We're in voltage mode. Turn it on and see what we get here. Okay, you can definitely hear um, a humming from the switching power supply inside there, but it's not too much, it's not really that annoying. Let's try turning up a little bit of the uh, voltage here. Okay, that brings that up. 9, 10.6, 10.9. Right now, I want to see how accurate it is. Now, I'm just doing the course adjustment right now for voltage. So, let's see here, I can kick up a little bit more. Looks like your course adjustment, you got a 2 volt. But, it's pretty accurate for that. Now, let's switch the leads on over and let's see how much current it can actually handle. I'm going to turn the current all the way back down again. Turn everything back down. Switch it to amps. And let's start turning it up just a little bit. Okay. 150 milliamps. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. It's it's in regulation. Now I can turn it down a little bit more. I have no voltage. Let's see if I can kick up a little bit of voltage here. No, it's considered a, it's considered a dead short right now. So what we're gonna do now? Turn it off. It's got one heck of a capacitor. Let's see if it can actually charge a supercapacitor 
from completely dead, which will show up as a short circuit. Let's see if it'll actually pump it up. Okay, I have the supercapacitor connected through the alligator clips to the unit, and then there's little holes on the side of the banana clips. I got the uh, probes for the voltmeter plugged right in there. And you can see right now we're maybe 40 millivolts. So we're gonna try charging this up to 2.7 volts, and let's see if it can handle a dead short. So let's kick it up. It says it can rate, rate for three amps. It's going over three amps slightly. Three and a quarter amps. I'll back it off to 2.75. Alright, got 2.75. We're going to let it charge up here for a few minutes. Kick the voltage up as high as we can. And it should probably take a few minutes for this to charge up. But right now, it's having absolutely no problems on a dead short bringing this uh, supercapacitor up. Okay, let's get ready to start backing off the amperage here. And there we go, we have a fully charged supercapacitor. And they had absolutely no problem. The leaves are still nice and cool, so they can handle the 3 amps of power that was going through it. So, let's try something else. Okay, what I'm going to do with the breadboard now, I got a little Texas Instruments TPS 61200 buck boost converter. It should start at like 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 volts, and it works up to, I believe, 5.5. We're just going to light a little LED with it, and we're going to use a power supply to give it power. So, I'm just going to do alligator clip to alligator clip and two wires to the input of this circuit. But before I plug in the negative, let's turn it back on and get the voltage set correctly. Turn the amperage all the way down. And we get the There we go. Get the voltage down. That's good enough to start with is two volts. So I should be able to plug it in now. And voila. Now we can play with a voltage and I should be able to drop it more. Okay, so let's take a peek under the hood now and see what it looks like. Okay, inside we got our AC power coming on in, goes to the board itself, goes through its own uh, really beefy uh, bridge rectifier, goes through the filtering circuitry, and it's got a pretty good size transformers. Uh, this is probably the big cap here, rated at 3300 microfarads at 35 volts. That's probably what takes a little while to uh, discharge when you shut the power off. Um, looks like there's a temperature, over temperature sensor here, which is also ran to the fan. The fan itself, through all that testing, did not turn on at all. So apparently this uh, big back heat sink here, it's a little warm, but it's not that warm at all. Um, we are missing one screw down here on the bottom though which helps hold this heat sink from moving around too much, so I'm going to have to throw a screw in there. Uh, the chassis is grounded, and we have the general circuitry for the displays and the controls. And there's also another capacitor sitting right on the output lead itself. So, Not half bad, the only thing I see wrong with inside of it is that I'm missing a manufacturing screw. Um, I'll find another one, throw it in there, and everything else will be good. All the uh, MOSFETs or whatever are properly sealed to the uh, big flat heat sink piece there. So for this unit being about $75, it's probably a little pricey for the quality it is, but it's not bad. Uh, it's good for 0 to 30 volts, up to 3 amps, which we saw it actually go to about 3 and a quarter amps. Uh, didn't have any problems with cooling. The coin fan in the back, even after charging the um, 
500, um, 500 farad 2.7 volt cap all the way up. Did not actually heat up the unit enough to kick on the fan. When I opened it up, that big heat sink metal was maybe just a little bit warm. The only two problems I've seen with this unit is one, it was missing a screw. You can see the rest of them are Phillips and I threw a uh, Torx that I had sitting around. So this way the um, heat sink and all the circuitry is actually nice and tight on there. And one of the transformers, probably it must be a cheaper switching topology that it's using for the um, down conversion on the power. It has a bit of a ring to it. You can actually hear it working when it's on. So this would be great for someone like me that only plays with electronics on the weekends, messes with little projects, doesn't need a lot of amperage, um, but it'll be stable. It'll work in constant voltage or constant current form. If you're sitting at a desk at eight hours a day, uh, messing with circuits, designing, and everything else, uh, five days a week, this is not for you. Go spend the three to five hundred dollars and get a real professional uh, benchtop power supply. But this is great for kids and weekend electronics warriors. So there you go. It's uh, not bad. I didn't waste my money. Um, probably more worth about fifty than seventy-five dollars I found on eBay. But there you go.